Hey everybody, welcome back to the Combo Couch. I'm Fiorella Isabel. I wanted to report on the story that's only a few hours old because I believe it is essential and so vital to journalists and I believe journalists should be all over the story. It is directly related to press freedoms and an attack on journalists and it really shows just how much influence and how much precedent the Julian Assange case can face when we're talking about protecting journalists, whistleblowers, and truth tellers. So yesterday, the UK state propaganda, the BBC, began targeting two journalists for reporting on US and UK war crimes, in particular, the Syrian chemical attacks. Eva Bartlett and Vanessa Bealey were targeted by the BBC via email, and Eva Bartlett was sent an email by a reporter named Chloe Haji Mateo informing her she would be airing a series called May Day about the White Helmets and their co-founder, James Le Musure, and asking if there was any clarifications or statements. She goes on to attack Miss Bartlett's reporting, to say the least, pretty much amounting them to conspiracy theories. I want to let you know that you and your views on James Le Musure and the White Helmets are likely to be discussed, and I would like to let you know some of the things which we are currently considering for inclusion that concern you and your ideas in case you would like to provide any clarifications or statements. That you promote a story of the war in Syria in which the Syrian and Russian states are the victims of a huge Western conspiracy involving the White Helmets and James Le Musure. We looked into your ideas and did not find them credible. They do not reflect where the weight of the evidence lies. You do not impartially investigate allegations by neutrally assessing all the evidence available. You do not provide a balanced view of other perspectives, nor do you contact those you make accusations about for clarification or their views. And as such, these ideas amount to conspiracy theories that you are pro-Assad and you allow yourself to be used as a tool by the Syrian state and that you promote the propaganda of the Syrian government, that the Russian state-funded media promotes your conspiracy theories, that you self-identify as a journalist, although you have no formal training and do not conduct yourself with the rigor of a professional journalist. If you would like to respond in any way, either with clarification or else to comment on anything I have said, I would ask you to do so within the next five working days. If you have not replied by 6 p.m. UK time on Monday 19th, the 19th of October, we will say in the program that we approached you for a response, but that you declined. Regards, Chloe. And down there it says BBC Current Affairs, Chloe Hajimateo. And there it is. So she paints Bartlett as a pro assadist She paints her as somebody that is getting promoted by Russia. So in that case, a Russian asset. She also arrogantly acts as, it, as if she is a gatekeeper, declaring that Bartlett has no formal training as a journalist, which is, uh, comes off as elitist, to say the least, and also you know, s stated that she doesn't conduct herself in the rigor of a professional journalist. So what does that even mean? I don't know. It doesn't have anything to do with the Syrian chemical attacks, the letter is extremely hostile, lacking in in any substantiative facts. It's just saying that what she investigated and what she reported on is not true. Eva Bartlett and Vanessa Bealey have both kind of been on the story since the beginning. Um, Vanessa Bealey also received a similar letter from Chloe. But if you thought that one was bad, this one was much worse. Dear Vanessa Bealey, and you guys can see here that it is uh, Haji Mateo sending it to uh, Vanessa. And she starts out very similarly. I am writing to inform you, know that I will be broadcasting a series called May Day about James Le Musure and the White Helmets on BBC Radio 4. And it will also be available to download on BBC Sounds. I want to let you know that you and your views on James Le Musure and the White Helmets are likely to be discussed in some detail, although I tried on numerous occasions to invite you to contribute in the form of an interview and try to accommodate your concerns, you declined to take part in the program. I would like to let you know some of the things which we are currently considering for inclusion that concern you and your ideas in case you would like to provide any clarifications or statements or indeed an interview. 
that you are an anti-establishment activist who has devoted a lot of your time over the last few years to the idea that James Le Musire was a secret service agent running a fake group of rescue workers in Syria, that you promote a story of the war in Syria in which the Syrian and Russian states are the victims of a huge Western conspiracy involving the White Helmets and James Le Musire, that you contribute to and spread conspiracy theories, that the Russian government and the Russian-funded and controlled media such as RT and the and Sputnik Radio have helped promote you and your ideas. That the Syrian government has provided you with visas and state escorts and suggested places you could visit. That you were motivated by the suffering of children do- during your experience in Gaza. That you have expressed anti-Semitic views, including blog posts and images posted on social media. That you see Britain as the corrupting force behind a lot of the horror in the world. We have investigated many of your claims in relation to the White Helmets and James Le Musire. For example, that the White Helmets faked their rescue videos or that James Le Musire and the White Helmets were involved in organ trafficking, and we found them not to have any substance. That you self-identify as a journalist, although you have no formal training and do not conduct yourself with the rigor of a professional journalist. That you have not contacted the White Helmets, made a rescue, or James Le Musire when he was alive and his family in order to check your facts or to get their response to your allegations about them. That you are pro-Assad and you allow yourself to be used as a tool by and that you promote the propaganda of the Syrian government, turning a blind eye to human rights violations carried by the Syrian military, and that you give public talks as part of a state-sanctioned tours for visitors to Syria. That you promote the propaganda of the Russian government. That when questioned about whether you are paid by the Russian or Syrian states, you have said that you are self-funded through the sale of your house. Do you have anything you wish to add to this? That you have shifted your focus in recent months to conspiracies about COVID-19. That you call the White Helmets a legit target in order to back the right of the Syrian and Russian military in their efforts to bomb them. One lawyer who we have spoken to tells us that someone who spends time with Syrian ministers and who is publicly calling for humanitarian workers to be bombed may be liable to face charges of aiding and abetting, inciting or conspiring to commit a crime under international law. This could appear to apply to you. Do you have anything you wish to respond to this? If you have not replied by 5 p.m., on monday october 19th we will say in the program that we approach you for a response but that you declined regards chloe bbc current affairs chloe hajimateo senior reporter slash producer okay (laughs) i'm just gonna repeat this for a minute here she said one lawyer who we have spoken to tells us that someone who spends time with Syrian ministers and who is publicly calling for humanitarian workers to be bombed may be liable to face charges of aiding and abetting, inciting or conspiring to commit crime under international law. This could appear to apply to you. Aiding and abetting and inciting and conspiring to commit crime under international law. Wow. Really? For for people who don't know, the BBC, they were one of the media outlets in the mainstream that really were pushing the Syrian chemical attacks in an effort to promote regime change in Syria, in an effort to have the U.S. foment this sense of war through sanctions, through the, the vilifying of Bashar al-Assad. And all of it turned out to be false. It is no mystery that the U.S. propaganda machine and the U.K. propaganda machine create stories and have certain narratives that they can only say. This is why they get paid millions of dollars to uh, sit there and lie and create conspiracies like Russiagate, which, of course, uh, was proven false as well after three years. And people are still out there saying it. People are still out there calling people like myself a Russian asset, calling journalists uh, a Syrian uh, pro assadist and for merely investigating, for merely telling the truth. And this takes it to the next level because they are bringing in a lawyer. They're bringing in the, the law. It seems to me that the... The, the mainstream media is emboldened 
by what's going on with Julian Assange because the Julian Assange trial, as we all know, is a kangaroo court. It is completely unfair. It is completely disgustingly, glaringly inept as, as a trial. And it is also going to set a precedent for how journalists are treated after the fact. And even now, reporting on national U.S. issues and local issues, we see the police, the state police, attack journalists, literally, physically. That is not so far from a more civil attack on press freedoms. Because if they can remove those who are really being the, the, the oversight to the three estates, right, then that's it. They can continue to do as they please. And if Julian Assange is extradited, that's going to really make it possible for everybody else who is telling the truth to be targeted, who is simply doing actual journalism, not public relations journalism that the fake mainstream media has has provided, but actual journalism. Like, we need a fifth estate, right? All of the people have, who have been covering Julian Assange have been screaming off the top of their lungs that it is so important for Americans to pay attention to this. And it is so important for Americans to pay attention to this precisely because once they do it to somebody like Julian Assange, they're going to do it to everybody else, every single person that they can that threatens them, right? And when we're talking about journalism that discredits, that catches the U.S. government, the U.K. government, the West in a lie, it is really a danger to the status quo. It is a danger to the security state. It is a danger to the military industrial complex. That's when you get targeted. You could sit there and write about movies or write about food, etc., and you'll be fine. Or you could stick to the narrative they give you. But the moment you tell the truth, which is the whole point of being a journalist, you are now being targeted. And it's neo-McCarthyism here. In a lot of places, it is, you know, the Russian asset. It is the anti-Semitic trope that they're using. You're, anti- you're an anti-Semite. It is the, you're a pro-Assadist, pro-terrorist. You don't care about humanitarian issues. It is that narrative that is twisted. It's sick. It's fake. That is being used on real journalists. People who are doing good work to expose the corruption in our countries in our imperialist Western nations like the United States and the UK government who work in tandem, in tandem with nations like Israel and Saudi Arabia to destroy many people and many countries in the Middle East, like Syria, like Iran. And all of this that's being reported is very, very easy to spot. I mean, A lot of us here who have been following the story knew that these chemical attacks were fake. So now they get to do this to everybody, every single person that tells the truth, every single person. Vanessa Bealey went on Twitter and she said, the BBC hack is now threatening potential legal action against me for exposing the hashtag white helmets as Al Qaeda auxiliary, which is true. That is exactly what she she exposed. And if not Al-Qaeda auxiliary, it was also uh, multiple terrorist groups that were completely jihadist, that were working in tandem with the White Helmets. Now, if the White Helmets are embedded with terrorist organization in occupied hospitals and involved in prosecution of civilians, they make themselves a legit target for liberating forces. Vanessa Bealey also said, in one of her personal convos with Chloe, She asked her if she would be looking into the White Helmet involvement with the BBC panorama, quote, saving serious children hoax. She claimed that it was not, quote, big enough and refused to discuss. She also wrote that in previous conversations with BBC's uh, Lise Doucet, she was told that the BBC would not consider looking into the White Helmets because it's too polarizing and controversial. 
then she she went after every BBC hack. Um, so then Vanessa Bealey said that the BBC trending hack, Mike Wendley, attacked me for investigating the hashtag Duma chemical attack hoax. Funny how there is silence from BBC. Now I am vindicated by brave hashtag OPCW experts who have spoken out about the OPCW corruption and fraud. And again, as a reminder, the Syrian chemical attacks were proven fake and concealed by the OPCW um, and then obviously exposed by some whistleblowers. And Vanessa Bealey and Eva Bartlett have been journalists covering the story since its infancy. Let's look at some of Vanessa's reporting just as a refresher. She wrote on 21stCenturyWire.com for a minute. And uh, this is, it was, it's a very long article, but it's actually um, really good. And you could learn so much about the whole situation. The UK intelligence propaganda construct and multi-million dollar US coalition finance White Helmets Group has consistently demonstrated its ties to these terrorists and moderate extremist groups in Syria. White Helmet operatives have been filmed with Muhaisini in the countryside of North and Hama slash Idlib, welcoming terrorist factions evacuated from Daraya as part of the Syrian government's amnesty and reconciliation deal. And this was in August of 2016. In the early days of the Syrian conflict, the reporting was heavily weighed in favor of the rebels and was being led by the likes of the BBC, Al Jazeera, and CNN, who lionized the armed groups while holding the Syrian government almost entirely responsible for the loss of life as a sectarian mob violence that they whitewashed threatened civilians and security forces alike and chaos reigned particularly in Daraz. So again it appears that the White Helmets were working in proximity to these um, terrorist groups including Al-Qaeda forces. This collaboration was also very evident in Aleppo and Eastern Gouda and um, she had it based on the testimony of several witnesses and civilians who she interviewed while she was there. She also interviewed a leader of the White Helmet Center, and he introduced himself as Abu Mohanad al-Mahamid. He insisted that they were volunteers and that they were non-biased, that they were not partisan, that they were not against the Syrian forces. So according to the analysis by Sharmin Narwani, Israel is so heavily vested in keeping Syria and its allies away from its borders, it's actively bolstered al-Qaeda and other extremists in Syria's southern theater. We know that the alliances are as follows. Israel is allied to the United States, to the UK, and Turkey, right? Erdogan. Now, we, we know that Iran, Syria, both sanctioned by the United States, are allies, so we know who is honestly has a desire to really go in there we know that israel's intention in in expanding in the in israel palestine which is entirely occupied is also to take over in the middle east and saudi arabia of course is right there with them a civilian named nidal had informed vanessa that they were paid by the May Day Rescue Organization, but had not received payments since June when the reconciliation negotiations were ongoing. So, uh, obviously, if the UK government is financially supporting a humanitarian condition, why would the money stop coming in? It's very clear that Vanessa is outlining here the, the, the money ties and the witnesses to really question the Syrian chemical attacks. She has multiple people she interviewed. Multiple videos are out there exposing these uh, attacks. The gentleman that she interviewed, Abu Mohan Nads, was not the person that claimed who he claimed to be. He was actually lying about being non-biased when there were multiple pictures of him being in unity with these jihadists and actual terrorist groups. Vanessa also mentions that in 2018, the massacre of SAA, who are the uh, Syrian Ar Ar Arab army, was barely reported on by Western media circles. And this happened in 2018. 
She goes on to write, the loss of life among the SAA defenders of Syria and protectors of Syrian people is deliberately marginalized or played down by NATO-aligned media who do their utmost to dehumanize the courageous men and women who have taken up arms to defend their country against what is effectively an invasion of foreign terrorist groups financed and controlled by the U.S. coalition, the Gulf states, Turkey, and Israel. So there you have it. I just wanted to point out that Eva Bartlett also... Uh, visited Dara's in September of 2018, and she told Vanessa, quote, when in Dara City this September, two medics with the Syrian Arab army told me of not only the terrorist disposal of kidnapped and murdered Syrian soldiers, but also that of the white helmets. According to the medics, when the Syrian army entered Dara al-Balad, they asked civilians who had remained there during the terrorist occupation about the activities of the white helmets. The civilians told them they had seen the white helmets collecting the bodies parts of Syrian soldiers killed by terrorists and throwing them away in bags, end quote. So again, um, this is obviously an unraveling of the, the false story that was concocted by literally every single mainstream media establishment, the New York Times, the BBC, the CNN, uh, Washington Post, like on and on and on. And the British government openly said that the White Helmets provided an invaluable reporting an advocacy role, effectively asking the White Helmets to provide evidence of their own organizations participating in war crimes in collaboration in the atrocities carried out by the moderate entities is hiding, is a hiding to nothing. They are literally paid to not do so as it would jeopardize their role as chief evidence provider to corroborate British foreign policy in Syria. In other words, regime change. The White Helmets have been given immunity by the governments that are bankrolling their propaganda construct and they know this so she uh effectively puts that out basically the white helmets are a propaganda group that was created by the u.s western uk backed forces attempting to uh push a coup attempting to control syria to remove bashar al-assad and in order to do that they needed to vilify him and vilify the saa and blame it on them and assad's regime in order to foment this pro-democracy uh, regime change and they went as far as killing people and lining up and siding and working in tandem with jihadists who are extremists and these groups of course were essentially created by by us by the united states and we are you know in saudi arabia and we keep funding and and weaponizing saudi arabia and israel and um al-qaeda is still here al-qaeda is still here and and this is a result of that the white helmets are a result of that they know what they're doing the media arm of of the oligarchy knows exactly what it's doing and they are going to fight at all costs to paint every single journalist exposing them as a liar. The corporate media has circled its wagon around the White Helmet organization in an effort to prevent the wholesale discrediting of the group as nothing more than a terrorist auxiliary trained in Turkey and Jordan, sustained with foreign money and upholding the violent sectarian principles of the armed groups they associate and work with. So Vanessa demanded a public inquiry into the white helmets organization um and the white helmets according to her are the ones that provided all the evidence the vast majority of it used by the british government and its allies in the u.s coalition to shape their foreign policy in syria and to support their systemic violation of international law and unlawful aggression against syria and her allies the white helmets and the governments that finance them and effectively provide them with immunity from accountability should all be brought to justice for the crimes that they have committed against the sovereign nation of Syria. She exposed them. She uh, off obviously is a threat to them for exposing the connections between the terrorist groups and the White Helmets, for getting uh, White Helmet whistleblowers who, who spoke uh, about that, who also for getting civilians who spoke on really what was happening. So Eva Bartlett also took to Twitter to call out the BBC for uh, sending her email she posted it publicly and she said the british state-funded propaganda conspiracy theorists are bored chloe should apologize to syrian civilians for being whitewashing crimes of terrorists involved in organ theft and faking chemical attacks 
And Eva posted a link to her article, so I'm just going to point them out very quickly. She used to do op-eds for RT. She starts out by talking about how Western media keeps referring to the alleged chemical uh, attacks on Duma as a fact when um, they have yet to produce one iota of evidence. And this was back, of course, in 2018. She goes on to talk about the unverified videos that the white helmets, of course, were created by the West to promote regime change. And she also goes on to talk about the many interviews and accusations that contradict the established narrative. She mentions the 17 Syrians from Duma, among them doctors and medical staff. There were testimonies that contradicted the accusations, including 17 Syrians from Duma, among them doctors and medical staff, who on April 26 spoke at the headquarters of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, or the OPCW, in The Hague, stating that there was no chemical attacks. So it was actually uh, the Syrian and Russian governments who called the OPCW to make that investigation. If we recall, they were trying to frame it like Syria and Russia were trying to hide and didn't want an investigation in Syria and Russia were like, no, we're open to an investigation because this didn't happen. So the most glaring irregularity mentioned in the annex section of their report was the admission of 57 victims to hospital before any alleged attack even could have occurred. If you guys recall that one. Another explained irregularity was Sarin showing up in the urine, but not in the blood test from the same sample. When Eva Bartlett went back and asked around Duma about the, the attacks and that if they believed that there was a recent attack in their town, many people replied that they had no idea, that they didn't think there was. And the locals basically said that they believed that the Jaish al-Islam, which is the coalition of the Islamist rebel units that you know were called rebels uh, by the mainstream media propaganda, but they were actually the terrorists, they believed that Al-Islam was actually uh, doing this to frighten them, to make them fear the Syrian army and the government of Bashar al-Assad. And a lot of people who she spoke to during her reporting were in agreement that that's what it felt like. A group of young men selling baked goods waved me over, handing me one. They also replied that they knew nothing of the attack. They were more concerned about the fact that under Jaish al-Islam, they couldn't get the flour needed for their baked goods much less food to live. This was a constant among every civilian I met, their hunger and terror under Jaish al-Islam's rule. They said that there was no chemical attack. I wasn't at the hospital that night, but my staff told me what happened around 2 a.m. There was suddenly noise, shouting, cars arriving at the hospital, bringing civilians, some people, armed men, said that there was a chemical attack. Some of them had foreign accents. They took people's clothes off and started pouring water on them. They kept bringing people in until around 7 a.m., Around 1,000 people, mostly children, alive from nearby villages like In Terma, Eze, Zamil, Samalka. And uh, many people later said their children never came back. According to Eva Bartlett, upon closer analysis footage from that night, it shows that some of the victims appeared to have had their throat slit, particular indeed if they had died from a nerve agent. So the witness reflections saw a lot of inconsistencies regarding the uh white helmets because the white helmets were actually supposed to protect people but instead it seemed like they were using the people as pawns for these terrorist groups pretending they were there to protect them when in reality they were enabling and um forming a coup with a coalition with these these terrorist groups to push regime change which is disgusting but it's also very threatening to a government that has been pushing that story, which is why they're being attacked. UN panel detailed specific um, of white helmet criminal activities that the media ignored. In this one, Bartlett writes that utter silence is the sound of the Western corporate media days after a more than one hour long panel on the white helmets at the United Nations aired. And that was on December 20th. Journalists were present. So it wasn't that the silence was due to lack of access. The silence was due to irrefutable documentation presented on the faux rescue group's involvement in criminal activities, which included organ theft, working with terrorists, including as, as snipers, thieving from civilians, and other non-rescue behavior. Manessa Bili 
was on this panel and as written by Eva Bartlett, even back then, is one of the corporate media's favorite targets, Smear, uh, considering she, you know, she did that whole report. Um, and she gave a fact-based lecture on her years of research into the founding funding and nefarious activities of the White Helmets. This includes um, numerous visits to White Helmet centers, countless testimonies from Syrian civilians, and even an interview with a White Helmets leader in Daraha al-Balad, Syria. Maxim Grigoriev, the director of the Foundation for the Study of Democracy, a member of UN's Global Counterterrorism Research Network, spoke at length detailing some of the over 100 witnesses his foundation had conducted interviews with. These included, of course, 40 White Helmets members, 15 former terrorists, 50 people from areas where terrorists and White Helmets operated, with another 500 interviewed by survey in Aleppo and Dara. Courtesy of Rupley, and this was, of course, in the panel, the White Helmets fact-checking by eyewitnesses and former volunteers. And the assertion is that the White Helmets were neither neutral nor volunteers. So, in, in essence, a lot of these people were forced to join and then um, were manipulated by these terrorist groups who were basically also hurting them and this making them hurt the civilians. Not a single corporate media outlet covered this event four days after the UN panel. And um, in spite of the fact that the corporate media was happy to propagandize the White Helmets for years, they were silent when this was exposed. Russia, Syria, and, and the Lebanese media, of course, actually were able to report on the panel and you know western journalists haven't said anything about it again this was all about getting uh hate on russia and syria however bashar al-assad had many loyal people as well as the syrian chemical attacks were uh proven entirely false just like the russia gate bs that has been absolutely 100 percent proven false uh it's important to note that bartlett really highlighted was that in Prior to the panel happening, a number of publications came out with these articles saying the same thing, that it was a Russia disinformation campaign, that Putin put them up to this, that um, Assad, etc. too, and painting the White Helmets as the victims in this whole conspiracy against them. She notes here that Big Bat Russia tarnishing the pristine image of the White Helmets, a theme rerun ad nauseum over the last year or two, and one which I addressed in early January 2018 when I was under attack for questioning the White Helmets. I mean, the Russiagate stuff is insane and it goes just that far to the point where those of us even talking about the crowd strike and talking about Nancy Pelosi's money ties and talking about the uh, the obvious lies of the Democratic Party that Obama knew, that Hillary Clinton knew, that they n knew that this was entirely false and they continued on it, attacked other people on it, attacked other candidates on it, really tells you a lot as to how far the mainstream media propaganda machine and their bosses, the elites, the oligarchs will go to really cement this into the brains of people. It's been happening since the 50s. This is neo-McCarthyism at its finest. And it also applies to Syria and the vilification of Bashar al-Assad because it, it's ironic. And I don't, I mean, if, and you, if, if you guys watch the show, you'll know that the, it's no coincidence that both Syria and Russia are resistant to our imperialism, are resistant to being underneath our boot. So Canadian journalist Corey Morningstar in September of 2014 exposed the role of the New York-based PR firm Purpose Inc. in marketing campaigns for the White Helmets. In April 2015, American independent journalists revealed that the White Helmets had been founded by Western powers and managed by a British ex-soldier and noted the rescuer's role in calling for Western intervention a no-fly zone on Syria. These and the subsequent numerous investigations by Vanessa Beely, including on the ground in Syria, taking countless testimonies of Syrian civilians on the matter. Ultimately, basically, guys, if the mainstream media propaganda state can go after Julian Assange, if the lawmakers and the presidents and the elected officials can go after Julian Assange, it seems only predictable that they're eventually going to go after everybody else. And they are emboldened to do so because of the lack of outcry in the United States and more so all over the world for Julian Assange. I mean, we 
do have people in uh, Australia. We have people in the UK that are definitely being vocal about it. You know, there, he, there's a lot of activists and uh, a few journalists doing some good work on, on Julian Assange on the trial. But that trial should be entirely public. So should the trial in, in America if it gets extradited. And that's just not going to happen. We know that by law, the, the way they treat Julian Assange as somebody that betrayed the U.S. government under the Espionage Act, it's not going to be public at all. And they can do whatever they want. And we are not going to see it. That is fascism. So when people really try to say that this, uh, the U.S. election is the most important thing, I just laugh because they're too fascist. Nothing's going to change. Neither of them are speaking out for civil liberties. None, neither of them are speaking out for whistleblowers and journalists. And so what we're seeing here is that fascism has arrived and Americans have the power to really do something to stand up for press freedoms and very few of them are doing it. Instead, they are reporting on uh, Russia. They are falling right in line with, ooh, Trump is so bad and so terrible falling right in line with Joe Biden. You need to vote for him. Getting so distracted by these stories. It's like, why aren't you reporting on <laughs> what gives the ability for you to have a pulpit? And when a journalist, and when in fact two journalists are attacked vehemently by the state, we have to say something about it. We can't just wait until they're in prison a lot of America in itself is so far removed from caring about foreign policy, from caring about civil liberties. They even, the Democratic Party has even been instrumental in framing that as a right wing talking point where Congresswoman Gabbard only has Republicans supporting her three bills one, reigning in the Espionage Act, one, for dropping all charges on Edward Snowden, and the last one for dropping all charges on Julian Assange. She only has Republican support right now. Why is it that the Democratic Party isn't doing anything? Why is it that there isn't a public outcry and a public support of an outcry for this at a very, very high level? Because if we don't protect our journalists, if we don't protect our whistleblowers, the people really telling the truth, then how do we plan on continuing to fight the machine. We can't. The mainstream media propaganda is completely at fault for brainwashing people all over this world, whether it's in the UK and whether it's in America, for the empire education from the very bottom of the source. I mean, whether it's school or whether it's the CNN pundits or the BBC pundits, they have a narrative to spin. And it is the real media's job, the real journalist's job to break down that barrier, to break down those lies and expose them because that is what the fourth estate was supposed to do. So this is why I'm saying we need a fifth estate because the fourth estate is dead um, because it's a propaganda machine. It is not real. It is a facade just like a, much of the governments that we have that are a hologram for actual oligarchs. And if we don't protect journalists and, and the sanctity and the veracity of journalism, where are we going to end up? And it seems like the Julian Assange case is leading up to the point where we're going to see as, as great as the defense has been doing and as terrible as the prosecution has been doing, the judge has been severely compromised. So we're seeing that politics is having a role in this. And ultimately, it is so important that we continue talking about this and we have more discussions on this and continue to break it down. Once we have a complete erasure of our freedom of speech, of our ability to be the press, it's going to take a lot more work. It may be impossible to come back from it. The fact that these two powerful elitist imperialist countries were able to fabricate stories that were completely false and knowingly manipulate public opinion and public absorption and public intellect with it is absolutely a dangerous thing that must be highlighted and must be fought. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Check out our Rockfin, R-O-K-F-I-N, 
And if not, check out our Patreon. We also have a PayPal and um, the, li the links will be posted below. But thank you so much. Convo out.